newly minted chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, Peter King, says that he is not going to back down when it comes to his next month's hearing schedule looking into radical Islam. Several Democrats and dozens of Muslim groups are fired up against holding these hearings, but Congressman King is standing firm, saying, I will not allow political correctness to obscure a real and dangerous threat to the safety and security of the citizens of the United States. But critics want to see these hearings extended into all homegrown extremist areas, not just Muslims. They don't think that Muslims should be singled out as part of this process. They claim that Congressman, the Congressman's hearings are reminiscent of the troubling time in our nation's history uh, that is known as McCarthyism. Here's part of a letter that was written by 51 Muslims and interfaith groups. Here's what they're saying. It harkens back to the hearings that were held in the 1950s by then U.S. Senator Joe McCarthy. That dark chapter in our history taught us that Congress has a solemn duty to wield its investi investigatory power responsibly. All right, so that's basically the background here. A lot of backlash on this. And Peter King, uh, the Republican from New York, joins me now. Congressman, welcome. Good to have you here today. Thank you. You know, I, I want to go to the beginning on this. What is, what is your goal? What do you hope to achieve by holding these hearings? My goal, first of all, is to make it known and make the public aware and to begin a public debate on the fact that al-Qaeda is actively recruiting within the Muslim community. This isn't just me saying this. Attorney General Eric Holder, a very liberal attorney general, by the way, said just about five weeks ago that he can't sleep at night because of the number of young Muslim men who are being radicalized to take up arms against their country. These are American citizens, people living here legally in this country who are taking up arms against their country. He talks about the large number in the last two years, the increasing number of uh, homegrown terrorists who have been indicted and charged with terrorist crimes in this country. So this is a major issue. This is and as a result of al-Qaeda is moving within our country because it's very difficult for them to attack from overseas. So they're recruiting people like uh, Zazi, who was the New York subway bomber, yep. who was living legally in the U.S. I can go on through a whole list of cases. This is a real threat. I want the American people aware of it, and I want to see also what we're doing to combat it. Yep. And also I'm calling on Muslim leaders to be more critical in denouncing it. Well, you know, uh, we're going to speak in a little while to a representative from CARE, uh, and you, you can bet that, that they're going to say that you're singling out Muslims, uh, that you are, you, you know, basically pointing the finger at them when Muslims on the whole have not been responsible for any of this kind of terrorism. They want you to include other forms of extremists uh, in these hearings because they feel like it's not fair to single out Muslims in these hearings. Well, first of all, someone should point out to CARE that CARE is an unindicted co-conspirator in a major terrorist case in this country. And they are putting themselves forward as spokesmen to the Muslim community, and they are unindicted co-conspirators. That's number one. Number two, the fact is that the Homeland Security Department and the Homeland Security Committee was set up as a result of the attacks of 9-11 by al-Qaeda Islamic terrorists against the United States. There is no other group in this country other than al-Qaeda and Islamic terrorists which is recruiting. We've always had neo-Nazis. We've also had envi always had environmental extremists. What makes this unique and different is this is a homegrown group of people being recruited by an enemy from overseas. This would be the same as if the German-American community was being recruited during World War II. This is a war. We are at war with al-Qaeda and they're recruiting in our country. And it's, as the Daily News said today, that's the most silly argument of all that we should expand it to everyone that would dilute the whole purpose of the hearings. You know, I'd like to play something for you because uh, Prime Minister David Cameron of Great Britain has, has come out with what some are calling a very courageous statement on what he calls the failure of multiculturalism, uh, you, you know, the sort of PC nature of dealing with threats uh, to, to a sovereign country. I want to play his, th his soundbite for you and get your reaction to this, if I may. Let, let's play that. Under the doctrine of state multiculturalism, We've encouraged different cultures to live separate lives apart from each other and apart from the mainstream. We fail to provide a vision of society to which they feel they want to belong. We've even tolerated these segregated communities behaving in ways that run completely counter to our values. Yeah, I, I think that last bit is so significant. It basically, he's saying, you know, we've, we've tolerated behavior among some of these groups uh, that basically, you know, break our laws and go against everything that the nation stands for in Great Britain. And in some cases, uh, I would imagine you might agree here as well. 
You know, uh, one thing that is different, though, Martha, is the United States, Muslims are much more assimilated into our culture. True. And they uh, are much more part of the American mainstream, and the overwhelming majority of Muslims are outstanding Americans. But his central point, I think, is true. Because of political correctness in Britain, they don't address the issues they have involving the Muslim community. And now you have people like Kerr and others who are saying, because of political correctness, I should be including everyone in these hearings when the main threat comes from al-Qaeda, and al-Qaeda is recruiting within the Muslim community. If they were recruiting within the Irish community, I'd say, look at that. But the reality reality is these terrorists are coming from the Muslim community. It's a small, small percentage, but that's where they're coming from. It only took 19 people on September 11th to kill almost 3,000 people. All right, I, I got to go, but one more quick question for you. You've been criticized for not having law enforcement officials and counterterrorism specialists on these hearing panels. Why not? I will have. Uh, that is, again, a totally phony charge. What I said in the New York Times was it's hard to get active law enforcement people to come forth and say publicly what they say privately. Well, I will have law enforcement people testify. All right. And I know you're going to discuss uh, non-cooperation of Muslims in these investigations as well and right. perhaps the role that, that uh, they are playing in protecting some of this. The argument is that they have uh, also turned in a lot of their own uh, people in these situations as well. Peter King, we will watch this very closely. Uh, we thank you very much for joining us. Hope you'll join us again uh, on these hearings and let us know how it's going. Thanks for the opportunity. Right. And ask care why they were named unindicted co-conspirators. We will do that. Thank you, sir.